Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am financial planner, Canna Campbell. Today's video is all about what to do if you have no savings. And I want you to know, I'm not here to judge you, I'm here to help you. So let's get started. Now, please make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and of course that notification bell is switched on. So for us to really see a shift and change in our financial future, it is so important that we understand the value that having savings has in our lives. There are multiple reasons for why we need to have savings, such as in case of an emergency, for peace of mind, in case we lose our job or we are in between jobs. What if an opportunity comes our way? What if we want to go and borrow money from the bank? If we have savings, we're able to act, we're able to step up and we're able to seize those opportunities. And we can demonstrate that we are responsible and safe with money and our financial stability is only going to get better. That is one of the many reasons why we should all have savings in our lives. And as I say in my book, Mindful Money, when we have the right amount of savings set up in a separate dedicated savings account, this acts as a more powerful sleeping tool than any sleeping pill could ever possibly offer. Step number one is accountability. Why are you in this position in the first place where you have no savings? I'm not here to judge you or be mean, but I want to make sure you understand why you've gotten yourself into this position in the first place so that you can take the right proactive changes and habits to get you out of it as quickly as possible and keep you out of it. Remember, I don't want to ever see you repeating history. Have a long, hard conversation about where you stand financially and why. Step number two is to open up a separate dedicated savings account. It's as simple as this. It takes literally one minute. Now, personally, I like to have an online savings account because typically there are no fees or the fees are quite low and you might get some bonus interest. But one of the main reasons why I like a separate online savings account is there is no ATM debit card attached to this. So it's a lot harder for me to transfer money and spend money from this account because I have to pause and actually jump on my phone or my desktop to transfer money. So make sure you you open up a separate dedicated savings account away from your everyday spending account. Step number three is to understand your net worth position. This is where you grab a piece of paper and you write down what you're worth, all the assets and liabilities that you've got going on in your life. I recommend for a accountability point of view, you write down on one list all of your lifestyle assets. This might include a car, laptop, cameras, um, a phone, maybe handbags, shoes, clothing, anything that's of lifestyle value in your life and add it all up and see what that total number is. The second piece of paper, I want you to write down all of your real financial assets. This is things that actually have a monetary value. So any savings accounts you might have, any shares that you might own, any retirement savings accounts such as superannuation, 401k plans, pensions, Kiwi savers. I want you to add up all of those assets. And of course, you might own a property, so you can put that in here too. This will give you your financial gross worth figure. The third piece of paper, I want you to write down all of your financial responsibilities. That is your liabilities. Who do you owe money to and how much? And again, add it all up. Now, once you've got those three figures, I want you to have a good, long, hard look at them and look at where your money is going. If your lifestyle assets exceed your financial assets, this may be a wake up call that you need to start spending your money in a different direction. This is now your opportunity to do so. You also might realize that your financial liabilities exceed your financial assets or your lifestyle assets, or even worse, the combination of them both. That means you are potentially borrowing way more than you can service, and you may struggle to keep your head above water. This is your shift for a better financial future. Step number three is the fun part. This is where you come up with one very simple financial goal for yourself. I recommend keeping it short, sharp, and simple. I do not recommend anyone overloads themselves with multiple financial goals, multiple accounts, 
because you're just going to overwhelm and distract yourself and it's going to be so much harder to make any progress. For the time being, just keep it really simple. So for example, I'm going to create a financial goal to save $10,000 by the 1st of December 2022. Notice how I know exactly how much money I want to save and I want to know exactly the date that I want to save it by. I have a line in the sand and I now know that I need to step up because I'm serious and I'm making myself accountable. So give yourself a short, sharp, simple financial goal to work on. Step number four is to budget within your budget. Write down all of your living expenses daily, weekly, fortnightly, monthly, quarterly, biannual, annual, and then go in and factor all those ad hoc irregular expenses such as Christmas time or any religious festivity that you choose to celebrate. Think about Mother's Day, Father's Day, whatever it may be where you like to spend money. And of course, making sure that you've got a holiday in here because Sugar Mama TV is all about balance in life. I want you to live your best life possible. Now, once you've worked out your budget, I want you to go through and look at all of those expenses and question each and every single one. And then ask yourself this question, do I love, value, use, and appreciate each of these expenses. If your answer is no, that means you need to cut down that expense or cut it out. Now, I'm not here to tell you what needs to be cut down or cut out. That's none of my business. That is purely for you to do because this is your life and your money. Just make sure you love, value, use, and appreciate it. Now, every single time you find an expense to trim out of your budget, I want you to make sure that you proactively transfer that money into that new savings account of yours through an automatic direct debit savings plan. Say, for example, I discover that I have a subscription in my budget that I don't really value. I will go and cancel it. And to make sure that that $20 doesn't get spent elsewhere, which we are all guilty of doing, I want to make sure that, that $20 goes into my new savings account. So I'm simply going to go and set up an automatic savings plan of $20 per week to that savings account. Now, as I go through each expense, I keep adding to it. So I find another expense, which is say $100 per month. I can then go and increase that regular savings plan from $20 per week now to potentially $40 per week so that you can see that money is coming out of my account as a priority and it's being directed towards that savings account rather than being spent. In fact, I could even up the ante and be a bit more aggressive with my savings goal by prioritizing a lump sum, a larger lump sum upfront the moment I get paid to achieve my savings goal. Now, this is incredibly important because what my objective is, is to try and find enough money out of my budget so I achieve that goal. As I said, I've got a goal of $10,000 by the 1st of December 2022. I need to work out how much money I need to save each week or each fortnight or each month to make sure I achieve that goal on time. Now, this may mean that you need to readjust that goal if it's not achievable. That may mean I need to delay achieving that goal to say February 2023, or perhaps my goal of $10,000 is a little bit ambitious for the time being. That's perfectly fine if you need to adjust your goal. The important thing here is we're creating a really healthy habit system where money is coming out of your account as early as possible in your pay cycle, so you're prioritizing that goal into your budget. You are budgeting in your financial goals into your budget. And this is a powerful habit where you won't even think about it. You just simply do it like brushing your teeth morning and night. Five is to hustle. Now, if you want to achieve your financial goals sooner or maybe exceed achieving that financial goal, what I recommend you do is get yourself out there and hustle. Look at ways that you can bring extra money in your life from an ad hoc lump sum basis and also from increasing your income, your regular flow of cash in your life. Now, when it comes to doing your budget, there's only so much fat we can really trim in our lives. And of course, I don't want you to be living a life which is mean and frugal and based on scarcity. I want you to be living in a life of abundance, financial abundance. And when it comes to earning extra money, let's be honest, the sky is the limit. So grab a new piece of paper and write down all the things that you can realistically and practically do to bring in some extra money in your life. So for example, you might be able to go through and release and sell off any unused or any unwanted items to the second hand economy. You might be able to do some babysitting work. You might be able to do some dog walking. You might be able to do some freelancing work over the weekends. Perhaps you're a really good photographer and you could do some wedding photography work. Perhaps you could go sing at a wedding if you're great with your voice or great with a musical instrument. Perhaps you could register to do some online market research. Perhaps you could do proofreading. 
Perhaps you could do tutoring. Perhaps there's some work you can do after work. Remember, the sky is the limit. And when you do it in an ad hoc manner, you can do it in bursts and spurts and take a break to recharge your battery. You don't need to be always going at 100%. This is what I do for the $1,000 project. And it's how it has helped me build a portfolio worth over $255,000. Now, from a regular ongoing income perspective, this is also really valuable. So you might be able to approach your boss about a pay rise. Now, you may not necessarily get the pay rise straight away, but you start to plant the seeds for potentially a future pay rise. You also might be able to find out what new promotions are coming up that you can apply for. You might maybe look at applying for a new job. You might even look at investing in yourself by doing a new course so that you can potentially apply for another promotion or another pay rise. Look to always increase your income. This is a great way of quickly and easily bringing more money into your life without having to forego your lifestyle. Now, whenever you hustle, manifest, attract, create that extra money in your life, whether it be ad hoc or on a regular income flow, make sure you proactively transfer that money into your savings account so that you don't spend it. Now, step number six is really important if you want long-term success and breakthrough, and that is to track and monitor your progress. As I said in the $1,000 project book, progress fuels success. It's a little bit like going on a fitness regime. Feeling and seeing that progress, that you're getting fitter and stronger and healthier, feel more motivated and inspired to have a go and stretch yourself and see if you can run that little bit further or that little bit faster. Financial goals and your financial journey is very, very similar. As you see, you're getting closer and closer to achieving your financial goals, that savings amount that you set as your goal you can actually start to see that all the hard work is worth it. And actually there are no real sacrifices because you are growing and evolving so much through the journey of financial freedom. So make sure on a regular basis, you look at where you are and you make a note of the date. You can do this very simply by making a note in your phone, or you can step it up one level and do an Excel spreadsheet, but always make sure you make a note of the date and of course what your savings account is sitting at. Now on that note, I also wanna be real and honest with you. There may be times where you have a step back. Something happens out of the blue or something you forgot about accidentally, and you may see your savings dip down a little bit. Please know that that is perfectly normal and perfectly acceptable. Just don't give up. Remember how far you've come in such a short period of time and also how much you've learned along the way. And make sure you get over that hurdle as quickly and as easily as possible. You learn from your lesson and you keep going. Never give up. And then the final step is to step it up. As you start to see that things are different, you're making a shift, you're having a breakthrough, there are long lasting financial habits happening in, in your life and you're going from strength to strength. I want you to start thinking about what is the next financial goal that you want to achieve? You're realizing how powerful you are, how capable you are, actually how much more discipline you have than you realize, and that savings isn't really that hard when you put your head, heart, and mind to it. I want you to open yourself up to other ideas and inspiration, other goals that you can achieve. Perhaps you want to go beyond savings. You want to hit your savings goal, and then you want to start thinking about investing. Or perhaps you want to start thinking about something really exciting, like saving up for your first home. Or perhaps you want to look at another investment opportunity, or perhaps a business idea. Make sure you are evolving financially. You're going from strength to strength and you realize each step of the way you are making really long lasting shifts and changes in your life. Now, I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. Please make sure you give me a thumbs up and I would love for you to share with me in the video box below by commenting what your financial goal is and when you would like to achieve it. Now, please make sure you stay in touch with me through Instagram, shoot me through a DM so I can help keep you accountable and help you know how powerful powerful you really are when it comes to achieving your financial goals. Follow these steps. I promise you they make a big difference. And of course, please make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel so I'm constantly feeding you with the right type of knowledge, empowerment, and inspiration. Thanks everyone. Ciao for now.